For this video, I'll be walking you through how to create a responsive site navigation menu that is accessible for screen readers and works 100% with CSS only. This menu will adapt to different view sizes and I'll be using the same HTML markup and only play with CSS to give it this looks. I'm actually currently using a variation of this technique at the before semicolon.com that you can check right now. I have loaded this video with a lot of CSS tricks and strategies you will love to know about. So show me your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. Now let's jump into it. I have here a simple website mock just so we can have a site feel. A simple style for the body, dark background, as always I box size, border box, everything. On the HTML side I have a wrapper that wraps everything and by everything I mean the header, main and footer sections. Inside the main tag I have a bunch of div tags that are actually responsive, changing columns and rows with resizing. Inside the header, a H1 tag with before semicolon text and an F for the menu where all the work will happen. To start, note the tab index attribute which is necessary to force the tab navigation to stop at the menu. This is essential to make the screen readers accessible. We see the highlight as I press the tab key on the keyboard. Inside I have a UL with row of menu bar and Aria has pop up that tells screen readers that this is an interactive pop up element. Now that I look at this, this attribute should probably go on a nav tag, but let's see what the screen reader says. And for all the list items, I set the role of menu item and I also give it an Aria label attribute with text matching the text inside anchor tag. Now pay attention to the text when I turn on the voice over on my laptop. Notice how he identifies the menu bar and give me instructions for navigating the items and when I try, it says the name of the item and tells me the index of the menu item and how many items they are. For example, one out of five. So he continues. Now back on the CSS, the wrapper width is 100% minus 50 pixels, so when I center it, it leaves 25 pixels gap on each side. I'll also set the max width of 1200, center it with margin 0 outer and force it to take 100% height. For the main container, I have a grid layout with CSS display grid where I use media query for different breakpoints where I readjust the columns, same for the banner, um, this large rectangle you see here. This footer style should go outside of the main where the footer is and now we see it. For the header, I display flex it, give it a top bottom 20 pixels padding, justify content space between to force the menu and the logo to stay on the opposite sides. I vertically align everything, remove H1 margin and set a nice font size. For the nav where we will work on, I position relative for something we will need later, display facts UL tag to align the list items horizontally and remove the dots with list style none. For the list items, I add a margin left for spacing them apart, basic style for anchor tags which I remove the underline with X decoration none, some transition for the hover effect showing the border bottom and I keep the border bottom for the one that is active, in this case home. Now let's get some coding done. The first thing we need to do is find the right breakpoint and for your website this may all be different. For this I'll go with 680 where I'll set my media query inside a UL tag, by the way I'm using SCSS for this example. For now I'll just hide the UL tag once below that point. I'll first focus on the nav tag where I'll set the same breakpoint and here I'll be creating a hamburger menu from the nav tag. So I'll set some size and give it background so we can track the hamburger menu bars. I'll be using the before and after pseudo elements, no content, display inline block so width can make effect. There will be two pixels tall, take 70% of the width which I'll position it left 15% since I set the width 70%. Top 50% so I can center them, then I'll make them white. If we look at them, they are not quite center, so I'll transform translate up negative 50%. For the before element, I'll set top of 30% and for the after, I'll set to be 70%. And like that, we get our hamburger menu and no longer need the background for reference. The way we will trigger the menu is by using the focus state for when we navigate using tab key or simply click on it. 
and when it receives focus, I'll move both pseudo elements to rotate 30 degree positive and the negative, and also top position them 50% to center. Now, when I navigate using the keyboard tab key, we see the bars rotate. I'll add transition to transform and top properties to make it look smooth. Now, let's style the drop down menu. So I'll position it absolute, give it some background and position it right, zero and 100% from the top so it appears below the hamburger menu aligned right. I'll change direction of the items with flex direction of column to stack the list items. I'll Z index it higher so it stays on top of everything, round its corner, some top and bottom padding and add shadow for the final touch. Now I'll use the same breakpoint to stack the list items where I'll first remove the margin and for the anchor tag, I'll display block it center the tax and set the min width. And when the menu item is active, I'll add background and I reduce its border size. For your menu, feel free to style it any way you want as long as you follow the positioning rules. Now I'll set the display none on the UL tag, so when the nav receive focus, I'll set the display flex again to show it. There you go. We have our menu that shows when the nav receives focus with tab navigation or by clicking at it. Now let's find the right breakpoint for the mobile size. I'll show the menu again so we can see and style it. And for when it is in the mobile size, I want the menu to take a full view size. I'll adjust the right position to negative 25, taking into consideration the wrapper left and right padding and find the perfect top position as well. You can also set position fix top right zero if you want as well. I'll make everything center with justify content and align items. Now I need to find a dark background, semi transparent. For the list items, I'll use the view height to space them apart so they are closer for less taller screens. Then I'll use the view width for the anchor font size so it shrinks and grows depending on how wide is the view. I'll also set the anchor tags to take 50% of the view width. And for the active menu item, I'll remove the background. Now we have our mobile menu. I just realized I had the wrong breakpoint. It should be 485 for mobile size. 425 is also a common mobile with breakpoint. We have two problems to solve before I let you go. The first one is for drop down menu. When the focus on the nav, the menu shows. But as soon as I tab focus to the list items, the menu goes away. So what I need to add is a focus within pseudo class. Now, when one of the items have focus, the menu stays around. Now for the second issue is that as long as the nav has focus, I can't hide the menu unless I click one of the this menu items, which loads a new page. What I need is a way to remove the focus away from the nav and any of its list items. To do that, I'll add a close button right after the nav. And this is a very important detail. Let's tie this button and it will be hidden, but uh, let me come back to that. I'll position fix, bottom center, white text, no background, bigger font size, Z index is super high and remove the border as well. Now I can hide it. So when the mobile breakpoint, the menu receives focus, I'll show it. Now when I click the button, the focus is transferred to the button and therefore the menu goes away. You can always add JavaScript to this to replace this focus trick, but ask yourself, what if someone coming to your website has JavaScript turned off? They won't be able to access your menu, right? Let me know what you think in the comments, like this video to support me, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, thanks for watching, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.